This is the review for the biotechnology test, which is your final test of the year. Remember, this test counts as a test in the sixth six weeks. And you can get five bonus points on that grade for doing and turning in the review sheet on test day. The test has 45 multiple choice questions and five true false questions. All right, so we're going to start off talking about mutations. Mutations are the ultimate source of genetic variation because that's where genes get changed. All differences in genes are due to mutations, whether it's something that's caused by radiation or some other kind of chemical or whether it's caused by just a misreading of the DNA or a miscopying of the DNA. A mutation is going to, be, is going to produce some kind of a change. So why would you want to produce changes? Well, one reason that a breeder might want to introduce mutations in the population uh, would be to increase diversity in the population. Maybe give you different colors of flowers that are available than you had available before. Um, also, the opportunity to identify new desirable traits that you might want to continue um, enhancing in your breeding population. It doesn't always work the way you want it to, but there is a high probability of success in some of the individuals in your population of animals or plants. Restriction analysis is the process that we use to look at the DNA sequence. Okay, We're going to use restriction enzymes to cut the DNA at specific sequences. Remember that the restriction sequences are always palindromes. Remember a palindrome is a sequence of DNA that reads the same um, both directions. In other words, it reads one direction and, the, and then the other direction reads the same as the first one. Some restriction sites produce sticky ends that leaves groups of unpaired bases at one end and others produce blunt ends with no unpaired bases. They both cut the DNA in specific places. If you're doing genetic engineering then you probably would want to do uh, an enzyme that produces sticky ends because it makes the the two separate pieces of DNA match up more easily. Uh, but if you're just doing electrophoresis to look at the restriction uh, uh, fragments, the pattern of the fragments, then it doesn't really make any difference which type of restriction enzyme you use. Here are some uh, numerous different kinds of restriction enzymes. Notice here's ECO-R1, which is, comes from E. coli, okay, and it has uh, recognizes the sequence GAATTC, which reads GAATTC, the opposite direction on the other strand. It's going to cut, it's going to break the covalent bond between the G and the A here and here. And then the two sides of the molecule are going to separate by, um, because they're put together with, um, with um, um, hydrogen bonds. So we're going to cut the DNA here. And we're going to cut the DNA here, cutting the, cutting the covalent bonds. And then the hydrogen bonds are just going to separate here to give us our pieces here that have sticky ends here and here. These sticky ends are four bases long. One, two, three, four, because we're counting the unpaired bases. Here's a different restriction enzyme from a different bacterium. Also cuts between A and G that makes different sticky ends. Here's one that produces blunt ends and so forth. So you can see that it, it depends on what it is, but every one of these sequences is a palindrome. You will need to be able to recognize palindromes um, in your, um, on your test and identify uh, which ones would, be, would be produce sticky ends of varying lengths. All right, so what does electrophoresis do? Well, it separates the DNA fragments by size and by charge. Remember, the fragments are going to come from the cutting of the DNA by the restriction enzymes. S the DNA fragments are negatively charged, so they're going to be repelled by the negative pole of the electric, electric charge and attracted to the positive one. The smaller fragments are going to move farther and faster. And what you end up with is groups of fragments that are the same size that form bands on the gel. Here we have an um, electrophoresis setup. We have uh, our samples in the three wells here. Here's our negative pole, positive pole. Remember, electricity flows from negative to positive. So the electricity is going to flow this direction. And as the electrons push their way through the gel, they're going to move the 
DNA fragments. Remember, if the DNA fragments are negatively charged, they're also going to be repelled by the negative charge of the pole and the electrons, and that's going to push them through the gel. And the shorter ones that are fast are going to be faster. They're going to move farther toward the end than the longer ones. And you're going to end up with your banding pattern of the different um, lengths of fragments. So why is this important? Well, this allows scientists to uh, look at similarities and differences in the genomes of different organisms. When we did the activity looking at the bears and um, identifying which ones were more closely related to each other, the polar bear, the brown bear, and the black bear, that's what we're talking about, uh, identifying similarities and differences. When you look at the genome of the chimpanzee and the human, they're 98.2% the same and only 1.8% different. Okay. Restriction analysis also allows scientists to study specific genes. This is how we know what the difference is between sickle cell hemoglobin and normal hemoglobin because, the, because of restriction al analysis of the DNA that codes for that, we can tell what the change was that caused the formation of the um, differently shaped hemoglobin molecule. PCR is polymerase chain reaction, and this is what you can use to increase the size of a DNA sample. If you have a very small sample and you need more DNA to test, you can increase the size of it by PCR. Remember I told you that PCR is sort of like a Xerox machine for DNA because it makes multiple copies of the DNA over and over again. Transformation is incorporating new genes into a cell by means of or by way of DNA from an outside source. In bacteria, you usually put the DNA in question into a plasmid because bacteria readily take up plasmids that are placed in their environment. The advantage of putting human genes into bacteria is that it allows you to make large quantities of the human proteins that you're looking for. So when we're talking about making insulin or, or human growth hormone or something like that, being able to produce it with bacteria makes it much more easy to come across and much, we can make much larger quantities of it than we would be able to collect from people. Genetic in engineering involves a number of different things, but one of mainly it involves reading and editing DNA sequences and then reinserting the DNA into living organisms. So we're ch changing the genome of something by genetic engineering. When you produce a transgenic organism, like a bacterium, okay, you do it in the same way that we did when we, when we um, looked at it, did the plasmid activity in class. Here's your plasmid, here's your foreign DNA. We cut both of them with the same restriction enzyme. The, this particular one is the same one we used in class, ECOR1. It produces sticky ends, which readily bind with each other there. You use ligase to attach them back together, and then the bacteria can take up the recombinant plasmid and pass that on to its, all the daughter cells that result from that bacterium. Now, when you're cloning something, you're making genetically identical copies of something, either a gene or a cell or an organism. And uh, we talked somewhat about Dolly's cloning, the cloning of Dolly the sheep in England back in the 1990s. Before Dolly was cloned, a lot of scientists didn't think they would ever be able to clone an organism from a differentiated body cell, a somatic cell. Uh, they knew that they could clone organisms from embryonic cells, but didn't think they would be able to do it from, from differentiated uh, mature cells. And so that was really a big step in genetic engineering and in cloning, was the fact that they were able to make this happen. So how in the world did they make it work? Well, they took the body cell with the desired genes. In the case of Dolly, it was a mammary gland cell. And they took an egg cell. They removed the nucleus, the haploid nucleus from the egg cell, and the diploid nucleus from the body cell. They fused the diploid nucleus into the enucleated or denucleated egg cell. And it began to divide to produce an embryo that is the clone. If you're doing this for reproductive purpose purposes, then that embryo would be placed inside a surrogate mother to develop into a new organism. If you're doing it for therapeutic cloning or to make certain kinds of cells, then you would grow that embryo, embryonic cells in tissue culture and then treat them in the way needed to produce the uh, outcome that you wanted to, to do. So how do you read a DNA profile? Well, you, this is done by what's called restriction analysis. You're looking at the patterns on the electrophoresis gels. Some of the reasons you would want to do this are a couple of different ways to look at it. One way we talked about with the bears, looking at similarities and differences between species. But one way that we commonly do this in practice is to, to determine paternity or parents' 
of a, of a uh, child or in crime scene analysis. So for paternity, what you need to realize about looking for paternity is that all of the DNA bands for a child will match either the mother or the father, one or the other. The child should have no bands that do not match either the mother or the father. They'll not have all the bands of the mother or all the bands of the father, but every band in the child will be found in one or the other. Remember, you get half of your genes from your dad and half of your genes from your mom, and so it makes sense that you would have some pieces in common with your mom and some pieces in common with your dad. For the crime scene, when you look at the suspect DNA, okay, when it matches the crime scene, what does that prove? Does it prove that that person committed the crime? Not necessarily. All it proves is that's the source of the DNA. And you can use, uh, you can look for suspect DNA, you can look for victim DNA, whatever, but, but it's going to be a different kind of proof than the paternity was. So here we have a couple of profiles. On the left, we have a, par a paternity case. Here's the child's DNA. And if you'll notice, the child's DNA, match every band matches either the mother or the father. So we can see every band there that the child has is found in one or the other of them. The child does not have all the bands the father has or all the bands the mother has. But every, child in the, every band in the child matches one or the other of the parents. In the crime scene over here, we have the crime scene DNA. And we can compare it to the suspects here and see that only one, suspect number two, has the same exact pattern as the crime scene. So we can definitively say that the DNA found at the crime scene was from this suspect, suspect number two. Vocabulary terms that are on your, on your review sheet, you do not have to write these all down on the review sheet unless you just want to, but these are the terms that you need to be familiar with. Biotechnology is just the manipulation of living organisms to make useful products. This includes not only genetic engineering and cloning, but also includes things like selective breeding that people have been doing for thousands and thousands of years. A clone is an organism or a molecule or a cell that is genetically identical to another. The reason Dolly is a clone is because she is genetically identical to the um, animal from which that original, that uh, donor DNA came. Genetic engineering is the direct manipulation of genes for practical purposes. You're trying to make something that you want to make. A mutation is a change in the nucleotide sequence. A palindrome is a DNA sequence that reads the same forwards as backwards. Remember that, that it's going to be, they're going in opposite directions, one strand to the other, but, they're, but the sequence is going to be the same. A plasmid is a small ring of DNA that's separate from the main chromosome found in a bacterium and is often used as a vector for genetic engineering. Recombinant DNA is DNA derived from two or more sources. So when you put that human insulin gene into the plasmid, you have produced recombinant DNA. Uh, restriction analysis is in analyzing the DNA fragments that are cut by restriction enzymes. So when you look at a with electrophoresis gel, you're doing a restriction analysis. Sticky ends are the unpaired nucleotide sequences uh, that result from being cut with a restriction enzyme. Transformation is putting the new genes into a cell from another source. And a transgenic organism is an organism that contains genes from another species. Transformation produces a transgenic organism. And that's all of the review for the test. Be sure to study for your test. You should do well on it. It should not be a problem for you, but you do need to prepare for it. See you when you come for the test.